Just like a river wash over me Immerse me in water as deep as the sea Hide me in love, your healing embrace To peace like a river Oh, wash over me And as I worship your majesty I worship your holy Send it now, a move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land like you've done it before. Won't you do it again? Oh, send it now, a move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now in power, cover this land like you've done it before. Won't you do it again? A Lord send revival. A Lord send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven break out. A come now in power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Won't you do it again? A heaven break out. Heaven break out. A heaven Lord, send it 
fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I cannot contain, I cannot control. Parklands family, we have some exciting news for you. On the 5th of July, which is next Sunday, we as a church are releasing our first official worship recording. It is a four song EP recording labeled Parklands Worship and we've named it Abide. It will be available on over 30 platforms worldwide, including iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Amazon Music, you name it, it's gonna be on there. Uh, we also have 100 physical hard copies for our church families to take home and enjoy. Our church is a God-honouring, God-worshipping community. And for years we have written songs and declared them over our congregation time and time again. The four songs in this EP are just four among the many that we have written over the years and have proven to be timeless for our church. And so with great delight we will release them to you. The word abide means to dwell in or live in. And we called this EP Abide because we couldn't help but feel that right from the foundation and conception of these songs to the lyrics and the melody, um, that they commanded a great call to us as the church to abide with God, to dwell with Him, to live with Him. So may you get lost in the presence of God as you listen to this, our very first official Parklands worship. Hi, church. Uh, we're in the middle of a preaching series, God is Not Quarantined. Uh, we believe that even though we can't meet as a church, as a physical body like we normally do, that God will continue to move in our lives as individuals and collectively as a church. Uh, today, I'm going to read from the passage of Exodus 16. I want to share my thoughts on breaking through. Breaking through. Even though we're not able to meet during this season as we normally do, God can still break through in our lives, in our lives as individuals, in our families, and of course, as we return as a church. And so I've got five thoughts that I wanted to share with you about the process of breaking through and how God leads us through times of breakthrough. God has exciting promises for your life and for my life. And I want to see the principles so that we can all lay hold of those promises. So I'm reading from Exodus 16. It says this. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and they came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and against Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and we ate all the food that we wanted, but you have brought us out into this desert to starve the entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses that he would uh, go out, uh, sorry, then the Lord said to Moses, It will rain down bread from heaven. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I'll test them and see whether they'll follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Verse 6. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it is the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? 
Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread that you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord because he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked towards the desert and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat and in the morning you'll be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Verse 13. That evening quail came and covered the camp and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, right, when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This morning, I want to share some thoughts on breaking through. I want you to be able to lay hold of the promises that God has placed over your life. And I want to see people set free from the captivity and the bondage and the things that's holding them back from receiving the promises of God. Israel had been just one month in the desert church. We know it was the 15th day of the second month. They left uh, left Egypt on the 15th day of the first month. So they've been one month in the desert and uh, already they're getting anxious about starving to death. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that anyone was malnutritioned. Nowhere does it say that anyone was starving. No, nowhere does it say anyone died. It doesn't say that they were having to slaughter the animals that they bought out or anything else. They weren't actually starving. They were just getting anxious about the future. They were getting anxious about where their food was going to come from. And this panic set in. Point one is this church, is you need to trust God even when you don't know how. Point one, we need to trust God even we don't know how the breakthrough will come. Staying where you are sometimes seems more palatable. Staying in the circumstance that you're in because of the anxiety of moving into a place where you don't know how. But this is the first key to breaking out and to breaking through. You've got to step out in faith. God will bring us out of the situation. You know, God brought the 10 plagues upon Egypt. They knew how he'd got them out, but now they're in the unknown. And they're beginning to worry about how things will look in the future. It takes faith to rely on God. Israel knew God had the power to break them out, but they didn't know how to walk with him. They didn't know how to depend on him from day to day. The key, it says that they were to follow the cloud, follow the presence. This is the key. In step one, when the anxiety of breaking through comes on us, as it comes on all of us, on me and on you, step one, the the key is stay near the presence of God. Stay close to the presence of God. Keep your eyes fixed on God. That's all you need to do is stay close to Him. Those who follow the cloud are always certain of receiving their daily food. Where the cloud rested, the manna fell. That's all they needed to know. Secondly, you can't romanticize the past. You can't think about the past in unrealistic ways. When it says in the scripture, it says, when we sat by the pots of meat and ate bread to the full. You know, Israel had a selective memory because I read that they were crying out in desperation about the terrible circumstances they were in. They were being beaten daily. They were making bricks without straw. And their their distress got so great, right? Their brokenness got so great that they cried and cried and cried before the Lord who heard them. That's the truth, right? But here they are now in an anxious state in the desert, not knowing the future. And they're saying, it was great in Egypt. We had pots of meat and we ate bread to the full. That was a lie, church. That was a lie. You know, if you want to go further, if you want to inherit God's promises, if you want to break out and break through, you've got to hate where you're at. 
You've got to remember things as they are. You can't romanticize the past because if you want to inherit the promises, you have to have a dissatisfaction with where you currently are. You've got to hate where you are because it's not the promise. You can't kind of accept where you're at because then you'll lose hold of the promise. You have to hate not having laid a hold of what God has to you. This speaks of accepting less than what God has planned for you. We need a hunger for the things of God. Verse 6 said, So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. Thirdly, I'd say this is you have got to cut off spiritual bonds, spiritual chains off of your situation. Number one, we've got to learn to trust God. Number two, we can't romanticize the past. We've got to look at it honestly. Number three, we've got to cut off spiritual chains. This dumbfounds me, church. At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. You would think that Israel, after seeing the 10 plagues manifested against Pharaoh, right, in amazement, in amazement they ate the Passover meal. In amazement they saw the Red Sea open up and they went through on dry ground and then they saw it close up over Pharaoh and the whole host of army of Egypt. You would think that they would know that it is the Lord that brought them out of Egypt, church. You've got to actively make a pact or a decree. You would think that they would know that. Yet experiences don't always break off the past. They had these incredible experiences, but they still had a bond to the past. I have learned in my time as a Christian, particularly from people like Greg McLaughlin, that I need to make decrees over my future. I need to make decrees declaring that I've cut off my past, that I want no part of my past, I don't want my past to affect me, and I have to decree and declare about the future that God has given to me. Many of you know that um, I worked in corrections, in jails for a period of time, a long time ago, and uh, watching inmates come and go and be discharged and then come back into prison always caught me, you know, how did you end up in here? And one common thread that I would always hear from inmates is it's easier in here for us than it is out there. And I think, but when you're in here, you're desperate to get out. You're desperate to lay hold of your freedom. Yet when you get out into freedom, this, this feeling or this thought comes on you that it's hard out here and it was easier in there. It's easier to go back to what you know. Yet if you're going to lay hold and break through and break out and get a hold of the promises of God, you've got to make some decrees. You've got to say, I am never going back. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how anxious I get, no matter how many setbacks I have, no matter how long it takes, I decree today, I am not going back to the thing that God does not have for me. Church, and so not only have we got to stick with the presence of God, not only have we got to not romanticize the past, we have got to cut off the spiritual cords of the things that we know so we can move into the things that we don't know. Fourthly, you have got to adapt to new things. Change can hold us back, but we've got to keep our eyes open to the possibility of the way God will do things in the future. God has new ways of moving for your new circumstance that you don't know yet. Prior to their liberation from Egypt, they knew everything. They knew how food came to them. They could see it. You would plow the ground and plant seeds in Egypt. And then Egypt was an irrigated uh, land. So they would, you know, irrigate the crops with the, the water from the Nile and such like. Then the crops would grow up. You would see them growing up. Then harvest time, you would take in the heads of grain, then thresh it. They would eat some and store some. And all over Egypt were silos and storage houses. Think of the time of uh, Joseph, that Joseph was the prime minister of Egypt and the Israelites, his family said, were sent down in famine, go to Egypt and buy grain. It was known as the bread bowl of the world. Everybody knew how bread and grain was produced in Egypt, effectively by irrigation, by planting and by harvesting. They knew that stuff. But now all of a sudden, they're in a place where they can't see 
where the provision comes from. It's gone. The cycle anew is gone. Now it's manna that arrives overnight, right? It's bread they haven't seen before and it only comes once a day for what you need for that day. There's no storehouses. There's no cycles of crops. There's only enough for the current day. God promised that he would provide for Israel, right? But it was an unexpected way. It was resources they hadn't seen before. You know, God has for your journey resources that you don't even know exist yet. And so you need to have your eyes open. Don't look back to the way that you've always known. That's what's kept you where you've always been. If you want to get to a new place, you've got to adapt to new things. Remember, they called the bread manna. Manna simply means, what is this? What is this? They were told, I'm going to give you bread in the morning. The bread arrives. They see it. And they say, what is this? And God says, this is the provision. This is the resource that I have for the promise that I'm sending you on. So, church, as I kind of bring this to a conclusion about breaking through, your breakthrough, my breakthrough, our breakthrough as a church, number one, stay close to God. Don't get anxious. Don't start thinking about starvation. It's not real. It's not going to manifest. Number two, don't romanticize the past. It wasn't good in Egypt. It was horrendous. And we can't look back at our past and think, oh, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, it was. That's why God wants to move you out of it in the first place. Number three, cut off spiritual bonds. We can't allow ourselves, even though we're having new experiences, to have ties or bonds to the old thing. They've got to be cut off. And number four, we've got to be open to adapt to new things. New ways that God wants to show us how to move into his promises. Lastly, I want to finish with this thought. You need to know that God is a patient God. You need to know that God is a patient God. Don't get stressed that you're not getting there. Don't get stressed that you haven't inherited the promise yet. Don't stress out about the journey. Remember to rest in Jesus. Remember to rest in Jesus. Nobody wants you to enter into the promises more than God himself. No one is desiring to see you inherit the new thing than God himself. He was the one who put the promises in front of you in the first place. He was the one who broke you out from the old in the first place. And nobody wants to see you established in the promises of God more than God himself. You don't have to know everything, church. God will work with you. He'll work with your mistakes. He'll work with you when you're slow to pick up what it is that he's doing. When you say, what is that? What is this? When you don't understand how he's moving in your life. Look at the people. They complained and God gave them bread. Right? He didn't say, you stop complaining and then I'll move on your behalf. They just complained and God gave them bread. Look at them when the people were disobedient. God didn't give them judgment and punishment. He gave them meat. He gave them quail to eat. This manna church, this bread from heaven, is a powerful picture of Jesus himself. Jesus is our manna, our daily food. And interestingly enough, in this chapter, Exodus 16 is the first mention in the Bible of the Sabbath. It's the first time the Sabbath is ever alluded to and ever specifically mentioned. Jesus is our daily bread and Jesus is our Sabbath rest. Church, if I can encourage you, moving into the promises of God is a journey. There's those five steps that we spoke about, but this last one is so important. Don't panic that you haven't made it into the promise yet. Rest. Feed on Jesus. Rest in Jesus because the process will take time. Well, bless you this morning. And I just wanted to bless Alicia and Fee and Mitch and Zach for all our worship this morning. And they're going to lead us in some more worship. Uh, just mark it in your diary, July 12. July 12, we're having physical meetings. We don't know everything about it. Rest in Jesus, right? It'll all work out. We're having some type of physical meetings on Sunday, the 12th of July. And we'll be communicating to you more about that. God bless you. Enjoy your time of worship.
the gates, flood every heart with mercy. Pour out your presence, inhabit our parades as we cry, Holy, Holy. And open the heavens, fling wide the gates, flood every heart with mercy. Pour out your presence, inhabit our parades as we cry, Holy, Holy. And open the heavens. Like you've done it before, won't you do it again? 